Uh, turn, if you would, in your Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy. It is Mother's Day, yes. Did y'all appreciate your mothers today? Those of you who still have the opportunity to do that? Good, good, yes. Stoic faces. Okay, that's what I get tonight. All right, that's what I've got to work with. I'm just sizing it up. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Well, as we kind of conclude, I'm just giving you a hard time. As we conclude our Mother's Day uh, day this year, I'm just going to try to share a few simple thoughts that I think uh, were kind of leftovers as I was uh, just going through the Word of God and looking and studying different things over the past week as it pertains to um, the mothers that the Lord has given us and, you know, the, the path that He ordained for us. You know, each one of us have walked uh, a very unique path in life. Nobody else has ever lived the life you've had and the people that you've uh, been uh, influenced by in your life and the intersections of uh, friendships and relationships that we enjoy. You know, the Lord God who orchestrated all that, that's unique to you. And so we ought to be thankful for uh, the Lord and the way he has worked in our life to bring us to this point. And certainly it's mysterious and uh, we'll never discover the depths of all those things. Uh, but as we saw this morning, when we're tempted to murmur and complain, uh, remember, it's possible. Okay, just remember it's possible that the Lord knows what he's doing. <laughs> possible, right? So while we in the flesh, we, we are grieved and we sorrow, we, uh, we need to bear that burden as best we can and bring it to him and ask him, what should I do with this? What, what, what should I do with this? And then see what he will do with it. So I was thinking uh, this morning of the Lord as our great physician. And I thought about doing something with that and just how he sent someone into Hannah's life uh, to kind of uh, provoke her and grieve her even more on top of the, the burden she was already feeling. And I was reminded of when I went to the eye doctor with the piece of metal in my eye. What's the first thing they do? Is they put those drops in your eye that really sting, Right. Like, this is going to help. I'm going to, what is he doing? Well, he's doing that, so it allows him to see more clearly. But I thought that's interesting that even our doctors sometimes, before they can help you, they've got to take some steps that are probably going to add to the affliction a little bit. But we serve a good God, and I'm thankful for his, uh, his touch uh, in my life. As we look at Timothy, it's an interesting relationship between Paul and Timothy, probably more of a Father's Day thing. Uh, than a Mother's Day thing. But as we wrap up, I kind of just want to talk about, you know, we often think of the role of mothers in our families, in our society, and in our culture, uh, in our country today. We think of the role of mothers uh, and how closely associated it is, at least traditionally. Maybe this is less so the case uh, with the modern generation. But traditionally associated with the rearing of children, right? And how great of an influence mothers have on their children. Right? For better or for worse, uh, there's a lot of influence poured into young people's lives by their mother. Right? And so we receive a lot from our mothers. Uh, and even, even those of you who are maybe thinking, well, my mother was never really around much. Well, even that influence is still affecting you in your life. Right? You're still cognizant of that fact and you carry those things with you uh, for better or for worse. So I want to look at just tonight just some... Uh, some persistence perhaps some encouragement we find in God's word uh, for mothers as it pertains to children and just some thoughts about rearing children and um, you know there's coming a time I'm, I'm confident for those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ there's coming a time for those who are in faith when uh, we pass through that veil of death and all of the things of the flesh are kind of stripped away and the Lord uh, reveals the glory that he has laid up in store for us in Jesus Christ, that all the, all of the, as Paul puts it, this, this light affliction that we suffer now for a moment is going to seem like nothing. I mean, it's going to be uh, worthwhile, all the things that we've, we've done and we've gone through for his namesake. And, and certainly raising children is one of those things. Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. And so certainly uh, rearing children is a work of the Lord that we've been called into and mothers play a big part in that. So I want to look at two particular principles from 2 Timothy 
that I want to share with you. One we find in chapter number 3, a very familiar passage of Scripture. We can begin reading in verse number 14. The, uh, the Apostle Paul is continuing to admonish Timothy, and he is warning him and cautioning him about all the different uh, manners of peril that will affect him in the ministry and that lay wait for him in the ministry and things to uh, be on guard against. He says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Right? And that might be a verse that we use more to uh, preach a charge perhaps to our children, that as they grow and come of age, that they uh, sincerely consider adhering to the things that they have received uh, by God's hand, for, by the preaching of his word and through the teaching of their parents. Notice the next verse, though. It says, And that from a child... Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now we know that the, the Scriptures we, we proclaim and teach our children all the time. That the Word of God has to have a prominent place in their life. Amen? That the Word of God ought to be something that they look to in their life. For guidance, for direction, for instruction, for uh, use in their everyday life, not just something that uh, that we learn the answers to. And I'm speaking to a group of people. You know, I was uh, I was impressed this morning because I happened to be at the back of the auditorium when all the children got up to sing, and I was thinking, wow, that is a lot of sticky hands. Now I was thinking, that's a lot of children, right? That's a big responsibility. And I just say that because at home we have the glass tables that we wipe all the time because they've got little hands all over them. Uh, so even when their hands look clean, I think they're just, they just secrete <laughs> sticky stuff with, at that age. But nonetheless, you have all the children gathered up here and, and you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of responsibility uh, for, for those who are rearing those children. And every one of us, by the way, has the inf influence on those young people in their life and uh, has the responsibility before God to not make ourselves a stumbling block to them in their walk with Christ. So all their lives, we're trying to point them to the Lord. We're trying to point them to the Lord Jesus Christ. One principal way that we do that is by teaching them the importance of God's Word. And, and every, every child must receive that truth for themselves. Right? I'm looking at some young people who are very close. Uh, some other young people, very close. You're at a critical time in your life. You've been, you've been brought up in this stuff your whole lives. You've been taught this stuff your whole lives. And your parents have held your hand and walked you through life to this point to say, this is important. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to be thinking about. This is how you need to sanctify yourself unto the Lord. This is how you need to seek Him in your life. And they've shown you the Word of God. And they've hopefully taught you of its importance. And now you're at a critical time of your life. And I know because I've been through that season of life. When all of a sudden uh, your world opens up and, and it just everything changes. Now this is no longer my mommy and daddy holding my hand. This is me making choices. I was noticing this morning as Connor uh, was dismissing himself from service and telling his dad where he's going and what's going on. Well, that's all new. That's all very different. Uh, it wasn't very long ago that those were not options for Connor. He didn't get to just go get in his car and go drive somewhere. So these changes, they happen very rapidly. And that's a very vulnerable time for young people. A very vulnerable time. for I would admonish uh, the children to pay attention to what Paul's telling Timothy. Give these things heed in your youth, and you will avoid some things that you may regret later. But he tells them, you know, you've known the Scriptures. What, what is it about the Scriptures that are so important? It's not just, it's not just, that they can teach you how to live your life. It's not just that they give you the pattern for how to have a marriage in this life. After all, marriage is God's institution. Uh, and his, his intention for what a marriage should look like is found in his book. And so as you're coming of age and you're thinking about these, there's a lot of reasons to look to God's word and to understand its importance. But beyond just knowing how to live life and why it's important and why we do the stuff and you know, all the temptations in your mind that you're competing with when you've been raised up in church, notice what he says, that the Holy Scriptures that you've known from a child are able 
to make thee wise unto salvation. Able to make thee wise unto salvation. Now I point this out because I have, I have grown up mostly around people that were Christians. Right? I went, I went to a Christian school most of my life when I was being educated. I was around other children who grew up in Christian homes. And I spent a lot of time in church with Christian people and other Christian young people. And so the fact that you just know the scriptures and that you've been taught all this stuff, there comes a moment in your life when it, it's personal to you. That the Savior and His relationship to you is a personal one-on-one -on -one thing. But for the parents tonight, I would say this. The Scriptures are able to make your children wise. It's important that your children know the Scriptures. But that is not enough. It's not enough that you just you teach your ch children Scripture. Must you teach them Scripture? Yes. Yes. But it, just filling them with scripture, if that's all you did, great. That's not a failure. But can we do better? Well, Paul says we can. And he talks a little bit that in Timothy's own life back in chapter number 1. There's another influence in this young man's life that brought him to this place. Where Paul was now encouraging him as a minister of the gospel. He's encouraging him in another aspect. And here we really see the legacy. And that's what I want to talk about today as we kind of conclude Mother's Day. And some of you, perhaps, you know, you're not greatly moved by these things. Uh, and some of you might have uh, your own thoughts about how valuable these are to you. Some of you are still navigating a time of your life where you're very young uh, and you're kind of like where... Uh, we were talking about in Sunday school this morning about 18, getting out of high school, you know everything. Um, you know, there's just nothing, there's nothing that you can't do or overcome and it's just you have it all figured out. And that's good. I've always said that that is a special grace God gives to young people to get them out of the house. <laughs> I mean, if young people knew the gravity of what you're stepping out into, it would be terrifying. But the Lord gives young people that measure of grace to say, yeah, we're just, you know, we're going to go out and we've got this all figured out. And then over time, I was talking with my dad the other day, over time, you realize I'm desperate for some advice. And, and about the time in your life, you start realizing how good it is to have people in your life to look to for counsel. There's fewer of them. So, Listen up in your youth and take advantage of the people God's put in your life that are able to give you wise counsel. Paul was one such man for Timothy. And so he's telling him here about this legacy that he has received in verse number uh, three of chapter number one. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned, what? Faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So the reason he had been taught the scriptures from a youth wasn't just that he was being, uh, you know, I don't know what the fancy word is. He's just being, you know, catechized or whatever into this religious system. But there was an influence of faith in his life. There's a purpose and a reason. There's a foundation in Christ that gives us context for why the scriptures are so necessary. And why they should be so meaningful to us in our life and in our practice. There's a reason for all of that. And it all has to do with our faith. And Timothy had received this faith, and we look at his family, uh, and Paul here is talking about the faith that dwelt first in his grandmother Lois, right? Well, we don't know much about Lois. I mean, if she, she lived an entire lifetime of uh, principled, uh, faithful service to get this one mention uh, for us to remember that there was this woman named Lois. We don't know much about her. 
but because of the example and testimony of faith she had, her daughter also had that same faith, Eunice, and now the third generation is coming along, and that third generation has an opportunity to have the same hope in Christ because of that faith that had been in their family and that the Lord had blessed that legacy and that generational passing on of the faith. You know, it's kind of like the picture I get in my mind is almost like a relay race where, you know, each runner can only, they can only go so far. The race itself is too great for any one runner to win on their own. And so that one runner can only go so far before their strength will give out. And so near the end of their stretch, as their strength is failing, what are they doing? They're passing off the baton to the next runner. And I kind of get that picture in this verse when we see that family legacy of not just scriptures, but the faith that really underpins and gives the scriptures context and meaning in our life. And for uh, us to know that this is not just, uh, you know, commandment adhering just for the sake of it, or just so that we can, uh, you know, receive all God's blessings and all these things. But there's some real things happening in God's plan and his purpose for man that we can be partakers of the benefit that Christ has paid for and this legacy of faith being passed down through the family. You know where most relay races get lost is at the handoff. It's where most races get lost because if they drop the baton or something goes bad at the handoff, it's pretty much over. And so the most critical element of the entire race isn't necessarily, I mean, you want to have strong runners, but you know what they rehearse and practice over and over? The handoff, because that's the most essential time in the race. It's the time when the runner who's uh, trying to make the handoff is at their weakest they've ever been. The temptation of the flesh is, you know, just just quit because it's too hard, it's too long, right? So in your mind, you're competing against yourself and the desire to just give in. How many sermons have we heard over the years about finishing well? Finishing well. Be an example of the faith to the end and finish well, right? As Brother Dennis Thomas says, there's no retirement in this business. There's no retirement plan in serving God on this earth. His retirement plan comes in the next life. As long as we're here on this earth, he has purpose for us in his service. So while that runner's fatigued and his body wants to quit, he knows he has to pace himself to make that handoff and execute it well. Meanwhile, the other runner, what's he doing? He's trying to get up to speed and he's not really at his pace and stride yet. And while he's doing that, he's trying to grasp the baton from the other runner and he might fumble it or juggle it, doesn't have a good handle on it and it, it can go very poorly. Great, great pictures for us to see what do we need? Well, we need more than human wisdom. We need more than great effort. We need more than, you're not gonna get a lot of practice at this, right? You know, I've seen families go from a hundred to nothing like that. It just doesn't take much for the adversary to get an advantage over the family. It just doesn't take a lot for him to get his foot in the door and to bring the whole house down. It doesn't take a lot. Uh, it can, those offenses can come in any number of fashions. And so it takes uh, a vigilance, but it really takes a holy faith. And so the faith, don't miss tonight the importance of not just teaching the scriptures so that their kids understand the importance of the word of God. They must understand the importance of the word of God. If they are to uh, happily seek after him and find him, that will be by seeking him in his word. That's where he will be found of them. When, whenever an individual comes to the place of personal and intimate knowledge of Christ, he'll be found in his word. That's where he reveals himself. That's where he deals with the hearts of men, is by the power of his word. And so they must know that and they must seek him there. But I've seen many in my lifetime, I've seen many, many a, a, a once Christian home and once Christian people and many once Christian children come of age only to turn their back on the whole thing. 
because it was all about the scriptures and commandment keeping, but there was no faith underpinning their lives. No faith. And the children were reared up in that, and they were very rooted in the things of the earth, right? All the do's and don'ts of life that really puts their roots down in the earth. That's not where our children's roots ought to be. Do they need some wisdom in their life to navigate those things? Yes, and by God's grace and his spirit helping, they will be able to navigate those things. But you will not put enough do's and don'ts in their minds for them to navigate them well. So rather than rooting their hearts in the things of the earth, root their hearts in the faith. The expectation. We've talked about this and what the faith is. It's not just an acknowledgement of what Christ has done for us. It is an expectation of his promises for us. Root your children's hearts in the promises of Christ and the richness of them. And and pray over them and teach them the word of God. But don't let the faith and the legacy of that faith be absent from your home while you're busy just trying to teach them all the things the scripture says to do. It's easy to, especially I think this is convenient for parents and a temptation. There's a reason uh, that the word of God is taught the way it is. Uh, And I want to get into this a little more maybe next Sunday. We're going to dive in a little deeper to kind of how the Lord has structured uh, his word and his commandments and also uh, how they apply to us individually. But it's easy for parents, uh, you know, it's easy for parents to take this and to tell the children all the things they should do. The worst thing that can happen, I've seen this in many Christian homes, the worst thing that can happen is that you rear up a bunch of just persons. You know what I mean by just persons? Turn with me to Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15. Verse number four, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. The worst thing that can happen in a Christian home is that you rear up a bunch of just persons that don't need repentance because they've got all the scripture doing and all of the commandment keeping and all of that figured out. They've got it all figured out and they know all the do's. Now, should that be done? Yes, and when it's done well, it will bring us to a place of repentance that was the whole intent and purpose of observing the commandments the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul the intent is to bring us to repentance if if that doesn't ever bring us to repentance and our faith then we have failed in the teaching of what we're trying to convey to the next generation we fumbled the handoff we fumbled the handoff so in our zeal to teach the scriptures We must teach the scriptures. You say, I think our pastor was saying it's not important. No, that's not what I'm saying. Teach the scriptures in your home. The word of God is invaluably important to you. We all know that. But I'm saying it must be in the context of a family that has a living faith. That's our obligation. At the end of the day, none of us have the ability to quicken the soul of anyone. We don't have the ability, but we can sure make ourselves a stumbling block and an offense to those who are coming behind us. We can sure quit and give up too soon and make it impossible for the next person coming after us to ever do well. We can put them so far behind, as it were, in the race that they can never overcome and get ahead. So we, there's a lot of things we can do that are damaging and detrimental at the end of the day, we can't do anything to make them 
anything. That's, that's the work of God and of Christ. So what is our job? Well, in a sense, our job is almost, I mean, it's, it sounds counterintuitive. I think I'll say it anyway. Our job is don't be an offense. Right? Just stay, don't be an offense. There's, a, there's a, a fine line, I guess, between trying to do too much and maybe staying out of the way. But don't give an offense. A lot of people that I knew, a lot of people I went to school with especially, were struggling in their walk because they had been raised up in homes that went to church and did all the stuff. But at the, in their teen years, they had no context or understanding of what it meant to be Christian other than a moral lifestyle choice that was different from somebody else's choice. That's not what Christianity is. You know, it's not conservative, it's not Republican, it's not all the things we try to make it. Yeah. And we would do well, by the way, to remember in our time, for those who are all scrambling with the political view to, to force Christ into our political scene, I want you to remember, he explicitly did not participate in the politics of his day. Yeah. And he will not be made a player inside the political system today he's above it he's beyond it he rules over it over all the affairs of men and so he's 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 not all necessarily the things we make him to be but i feel for those young people that were in my class who eventually came of age had nothing to hold on to and fell away they had no hope to cling to. They didn't even understand the heritage they had received. They didn't understand what they had been given. They had been taught the things about Christianity we are to observe, right? That on the side of what ought we to do, what does a Christian testimony and example look like? A lot of time was spent talking about all of those things. But the whole reason of having a testimony is to point anyone that notices it to the hope you have. And they didn't have that. They didn't even understand what it, what it meant to have one. And so as parents, as mothers, uh, as children in this relay race of generation to generation uh, that we have been put into by our Heavenly Father, remember that it's, it's yes, the scriptures, teach it, observe it, but if they can't see an example and have an understanding of the hope you have and the faith that you have in Christ concerning the things he's promised that he will do, then it's a good chance it'll fall flat. A good chance it'll fall flat. And, and like I said, worst case, you end up raising just persons who see themselves as righteous and think, I'm a Christian because I live by this moral code. That they think that's what Christianity is, is living by this code of ethics and character. And so that makes me Christian. Then we failed in the handoff. We fumbled it on our end. And we failed to communicate to them what the hope of the gospel ever was. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save sinners. If we've not brought our children to a place where they understand that they are a sinner and that there's grace for them in Christ, then we've failed to teach them the truth of the gospel. So all the rest of it, while it's important, it's only important. And this is what I want you to understand. All of the rest that we teach in the Christian faith, what it means to be in the faith, that stuff applies for those who are not to be redundant, but in the faith. So we have to also teach and communicate what does that mean to be in the faith, right? So we move a person from a place of unbelief to a place where they're in the faith. And now we've received these things from Christ to observe and do in obedience to the what? Obedience to the faith. So let's not forget the faith. I want to use Timothy as an example tonight to say in all of our mothering and in all of our busyness, and in all of our doing, and in all of our teaching, and in all of our instruction to our children, uh, fathers and mothers, in all of that, don't forget 
to communicate the faith because that is the legacy that is the legacy that is what passes on down the scriptures are able to make one wise unto salvation but the context of communicating the faith we have is absolutely essential in your home as well and so your home should have i would hope a healthy diet of both of what it means to have the testimony of christ as a person and as a family uh, and all of the teachings that he's committed to us for us to observe in the context of what it means to be a christian in the true sense of what the bible commits to us as those who are in the faith we have a holy expectation from god and jesus christ concerning his return and then and the promises that he's made to us concerning redemption and forgiveness and salvation and eternal life and all, all the other things that he has promised amen